Hello, everyone. Welcome to Inconvenient Truths. I'm your host, Jennifer Zeng. On July 6, Xi Jinping visited the Eastern Theater Command of the CCP's Army PLA, which has the closest relationship with the potential Taiwan Strait conflict. On the same day, news broke online that Wu Guohua, the deputy commander of the CCP's rocket force, had committed suicide. Not long ago, there were also reports that the current commander of the rocket force, Li Yuchao, the former commander Wei Fenghe, and several other high-ranking generals have encountered troubles. It's like a major earthquake within the rocket force. Will this have an impact on Xi Jinping's ambition and plan to attack Taiwan? Today, let's discuss it, this, this issue. On July... While Xi Jinping was inspecting, on July 6, while Xi Jinping was inspecting the Eastern Command of the PLA, news broke online about the suicide of Wu Guohua, the deputy commander of the rocket force. However, the internal notification from the CCP claimed that Wu Guohua died of cerebral hemorrhage. Furthermore, former Colonel Yao Chen from the PLA Navy Command revealed on Twitter that on June 26, the current commander of the rocket force, Li Yuchao, was taken away from his office for investigation, possibly due to his son's alleged, alleged betrayal of military intelligence to the U.S. There are also signs that the former commander of the rocket force, who later served as the Minister of National Defense, Wei Fenghe, is under investigation too. Others who have faced trouble include Liu Guangbin, the deputy commander of the rocket force. Zhang Zhengzhong, former deputy commander of the rocket force and current deputy chief of staff of the Central Military Commission Joint Staff Department, as well as Shang Hong, the deputy commander of the Strategic Support Force and the commander of the Space Force. Shang Hong faced trouble just before the CCP's 20th National Congress, where he had his representative qualification revoked, and there has been no news about him since then. In other words, Xi Jinping's rectification of the rocket force began last year, and the process of rectification, the sudden death of deputy commander Wu Guohua, would, would naturally raise many speculations. Analysts believe that there were many influential figures from the second red generation in the PLA rocket force, and Xi Jinping has concerns about them. The rectification was only a matter of time, especially if Xi Jinping is planning to launch a war against Taiwan. The rocket force will be his most important vanguard, but at the same time, it will also be a force that he has to that he has to guard against. The Wagner Group up uprising in Russia has also made Xi Jinping fearful as he worries about similar uprisings happening within China. Therefore, he may intensify the purging of dissidents within the military, and there may be more military leaders from different branches who will undergo political cleansing. Yao Chen recently mentioned in a TV discussion that around the time of the 20th National Congress, a report was released by the United States Air Force Academy, which provided detailed information about the PLA rocket force. The report disclosed the personnel structure, organizational structure, command system, logistic basis, and even the names of some officials within the rocket force. 
Yao Chen stated that the rocket force is the most secretive unit within the PLA. Such information couldn't have been obtained through satellite surveillance, nor could it have been known by lower level personnel within the rocket force. As Li Yuchao, the commander of the rocket force, has a son studying in the US, Yao Chen speculated that the leak might have come from Li Yuchao's son. Li Yuchao was taken away during the meeting related to this incident. Yao Chen also mentioned that the rocket force is a highly sensitive unit, but when it comes to appointment of senior military officers, Xi Jinping can hardly only use his trusted confidence like in other branches, such as the land force, as rocket force is a highly technical force. So Xi Jinping cannot appoint leaders who lack knowledge and missile of who lack knowledge of missiles and the space. That's one of the reasons why Xi Jinping doesn't have peace of mind about the rocket force. The second factor is that if the CCP intends to engage in external combat, particularly against Taiwan or the US, the rocket force and its missiles would be their primary weapon. Therefore, in the event of a war, the U.S. might initiate a targeted strike against the rocket force bases. In that case, the rocket per force personnel would have no chance of survival. Th this has resulted in a severe reluctance to engage in combat within the rocket force, even more so than within the land force, navy, or air force. This phenomenon has led to the rocket force being both unwilling to fight and under pressure from Xi Jinping. Consequently, this force is living in fear and its morale is highly unstable. Yao Chen stated that most of the leaders in the rocket force who faced trouble were those who had doubts and were disloyal to Xi Jinping. Thus, they were subjected to re rectification. The fact that Commander Li Yuchao was taken away during a meeting shows the gravity of the situation. Another political commentator, Chen Po Kong, mentioned that besides the rocket force, the CCP's submarine force also faces significant mental pressure and is highly afraid of the U.S. military. To leave room for themselves, there might have been communication with the U.S. This could be the reason why the report from the U.S. Air Force Committee uh, Academy provided such detail information about the 150,000 strong rocket force. The release of this, this report by the U.S. was primarily to deter the CCP. However, it's possible that this report caught the attention and raised the vigilance of Xi Jinping, leading to the arrest of Li Yuchao and implicating Wei Fenghe, who promoted Li Yuchao. The precursor, the precursor of to this PLA rocket force was the second uh, artillery force of the PLA, and this is a propaganda uh, video uh, of this rocket force made by obviously the CCP. And uh, so the rocket force is an essential component of China's land, sea, and air integrated nuclear deterrent force. As a missile force, the rocket force main weapons include strategic ballistic missiles carrying nuclear warheads, as well as ballistic and cruising missiles carrying conventional warheads. They are equipped with short-range, medium-range, intercontinental ballistic missiles and long-range cruise missiles, among other types of weapons. If Xi Jinping plans to attack Taiwan, the rocket force is an indispensable offensive force. 
On December 31st, 2015, during the funding ceremony of the CCP's Rocket Force and the Strategic Support Force, Xi Jinping stated that the Rocket Force is the core force of China's strategic deterrence, the strategic support for China's great power status, and an important cornerstone in safeguarding national security. She called for all officers and soldiers of the rocket force to enhance their credible and reliable nuclear deterrence and retaliation capabilities in accordance with the strategic requirement of dual capability of nuclear and conventional forces and comprehensive deterring and war fighting. He also emphasized the need to strengthen the development of medium and long-range precision strike, strike capabilities and enhance strategic balance. Now, as she moves to rectify this important cornerstone in safeguarding national security, especially targeting senior military generals, the consequences are unpredictable, predictable and introduce uncertainties to his Taiwan offensive plans. Former Chief China Policy Advisor to the U.S. State Department, Mao Xu, wrote an article in Taiwan's Liberty Times stating that the Russian Wagner Group incident struck a chord with Xi Jinping as CCP leaders have always been concerned about military rebellions. Mao Xu mentioned that the CCP has always been most worried about three types of cha changes, military uh, political coups, military mutinities, mutinies, and civil uprisings. The possibility of military mutiny has attracted great attention and discussing following the Wagner incident. This is precisely what the CCP feels most. From the current situation, it seems that the emphasis placed by Xi and the Central Military Commission on the military's loyalty might face new and unknown challenges within the rocket force. If a Taiwan conflict were to erupt, due to the stumbleness of Xi Jinping at a time when ideology and brainwashing have little effect, would there be mutiny within the unsettled rocket force? Can the CCP effectively control such a situation? What kind of turmoil would occur within the chaotic ranks of the CCP? Therefore, if Xi Jinping can think rationally, perhaps he will reconsider whether to launch an attack on Taiwan. However, currently, how to handle the rocket force commander and other senior military leaders is a major challenge for Xi. From July 5th to the 7th, Xi Jinping conducted a three-day inspection in Suzhou and Nanjing. There have been online rumors that during his visit to Suzhou, Xi Jinping delivered a three hour and 20 minute speech spanning 86 pages. Undoubtedly, this was a political declaration crafted by his most trusted advisors according to his demands and preferences. The main content included slogans like hold the rice bowl in our own hands and the bowl must primarily contain Chinese grains. He also urged the entire party, military and people of all ethnic groups to remember 12 most important Chinese related things. One, speak Chinese. Two, eat Chinese food. Three, wear Chinese clothes. Four, use Chinese product, products. Five, travel in China. Six, celebrate Chinese festivals. Seven, buy Chinese goods. Eight, have a Chinese mind. Nine, think from China's perspective. Ten, think about Chinese matters. Eleven, adhere to Chinese etiquette. Twelve, be Chinese. While the authentic 
authenticity of these rumors cannot be confirmed at the moment. It does seem consistent with what Xi Jinping has been advocating in recent years. Therefore, some commentators say that if this rumor is true, it should be regarded as a historic political event that will impact China's destiny following the Cultural Revolution and the reform and the opening up. To the outside world, such extreme na extreme nationalist rhetor rhetoric is likely to fuel populist sentiments and signifies that Xi Jinping is personally sounding the battle cry against mainstream world civilization. The extreme security measures taken during Xi's visit to Suzhou already indicate his increasing sense of insecurity. Gas cylinders used by residents in nearby residential buildings for cooking were reportedly confiscated, and the residents were not allowed to cook for three days. Instead, the authorities would deliver their meals to their doorstep. The alleged reason for confiscating the gas cylinders was to prevent them from being used as explosives and causing explosions. I have never heard of any dictator in the world who would go to such pathological lengths to safeguard against their own people. When the leader comes for an inspection, the residents in a large area are not even allowed to cook. For themselves, in a situation where there is such instability among the military, the people, and even within the ranks of the authorities, Xi Jinping does need to rethink what he has left to attack Taiwan. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please double check if you are still subscribed to my channel, as YouTube keeps taking off my subscribers. And if you like my content, please spread my channel and videos, or go to my website at jenniferzhengblog.com. That's jenniferzhengblog.com. Sign up for a membership or make a donation to support my effort. Thank you. See you next time.